In the year 1976, when India was under national emergency, declared by its only female prime minister till date, a new voice emerged in Malayalam cinema. Swapnadanam, a marital psychodrama, marked the debut of director K.G. George that won him both the Kerala State Film Award and National Award for Best Malayalam Film of the Year. There was this sequence in Swapnadanam where the doctor's wife suggests during lovemaking how she feels like overpowering her husband both mentally and physically when together in bed and how when he leaves the bed she feels like she has been abandoned. Minutes after this moment the doctor receives an urgent call from the hospital and the wife shouts at him as he leaves. Hardly has the sexual equation between the man and woman been portrayed so blatantly in Indian cinema such that the ensuing violence works at both physical and emotional level. Hardly has the Indian wife been so open and on the face about the psychology of her desires in Malayalam cinema or Indian cinema till then or even today. And there began KG George's discourse of the Indian female through his films which regularly dealt with the topics hardly touched in Indian cinema taking them head on but never at the cost of losing accessibility for the mass audience. His was a unique oeuvre linking niche topics to mass execution that above anything else was a startling demystification of the image of Indian woman. KG George, one of the most progressive minds of Indian cinema, scarcely known to cinephiles beyond Kerala, passed away a few days back. We had attempted multiple times for an interview with him and his family, but unfortunately could never reach George who spent his last few years in an old age home. Nevertheless, we try to put this tribute video celebrating KG George and his cinema and his woman characters in particular, self-unaware advocates of desire and liberty, clear about what they want in life and thus way ahead of their times. Perhaps what astounded us the most when we watched George's films is how he presents the brutal realities of life in the most casual, indifferent way, without any such build up, just like in life. There are sequences which come without any highlight out of nowhere but stay with you for lifetime. His technique is one of unobtrusiveness which means he does things that may be too sophisticated to even be noticed let alone appreciated whether integral to the central plot point or otherwise. Say suppose this scene from Lekha Yude Marana Moru flashback the death of Lekha a flashback a car drives in with extra actors and they all come out of the vehicle one after another a passing scene without support of any commentary or dialogues but establishing the state of extractors in the industry in one frame the entire first act of the film depicts the crisis and exploitation of lekha as a new struggling actor in the industry but with this one scene george instantly suggests how this might not be the story of lekha alone like he had always defended this film when tagged as real adaptation of actress shobha's death and her affair with Balu Mahendra a close friend of George Lekha Yude Marana Moru flashback is a brilliant postmortem of the shadows behind the tinsel town of world of cinema of the violence and exploitations behind the curtains and how one girl rose against all of it through a struggle sacrifices and stubbornness and yet had to eventually succumb to her loneliness and search for true love George works on a similar postmortem of the theater arena in his previous film Yavanika. Another story of violence and exploitation faced by her protagonist Rohini. In a world where each character is painted in grey, everyone is hiding something. The play being performed by the troupe is titled Black and White. Yavanika suggests how celebrated artists might be violent misogynists behind closed doors. How actors with thunderous punchlines on stage are individuals struggling in real life or how lovers in the play share no chemistry in life. The play on the stage is about a woman trying to hold on to her own amidst different harsh realities of life. And the paradox is how Rohini the protagonist of George's film is deprived of the same rights in reality. When Mamuti as Inspector Jacob Airely asks Rohini about her feelings for the misogynist Ayappan she says she is not sure after thinking about the question for a few seconds as you might have witnessed in life that the gravest exploitations can often numb one out of one's feelings these women who appear complete on the outside and broken on the inside keep on appearing in George's stories he has continually discarded the high pedestal that indian art and society has always reserved for its women looking at them from a prism of intrigue and mystery 
George's women are flawed, characters of desire as much as the men and thus demystified from the age-old entity. It is astounding how George has constantly hit at the mother archetype film after film. Something let alone India, even the West is somehow trying to address with only a handful of works till date. We watch how Srividya in Irakal and Adam in Nevariyallu has no qualms in giving in to her desires even after when it affects her children adversely. Her Rani sleeps with a servant in Irakal with no longing for her daughter to away with her husband. Her Alice tries to find shelter in her affair with a young man while her daughter struggles with puberty and the housemaid comes to her support. Do not get it wrong in thinking that George advocates such disregard to the children. Instead, it is his recurring theme to suggest how children get affected due to the violence and unhappiness of the parents that keeps coming back in his films. His point being that Annie or Alice behaving in a certain way is not a fault of their alone. The fathers, brothers, husbands and the society overall has a role to play that ultimately affects the mother and her children. It's just that George's women are not all sacrificial like the Indian society expects them to be for the sake of their children. they mostly look for channels to relinquish their thirst for love and desire be what that might lead them to a beautiful contrast is portrayed in adaminya variyallu where two women belonging to contrasting social strata face equivalent violence and disrespect in life as their journeys take them to similar endings vasanthi is unlike alice and like everything our society expects out of its women she cares for her son looks after her mother in law on the face of continuous humiliation and disrespect and earns for her family withstanding the physical and mental torture from her husband and what does her life lead her to losing her mental balance and senses on the face of trauma and violence taking her to the asylum in spite of her socially agreeable ways her son too is deprived of a touch much like alice's children alice adopts disagreeable ways as her own form of revenge on life and her husband Vasanthi and Alice merge into Susan in A Karnigodi, a woman who eventually loses her chaste and moral ways due to multifaceted pressure from varied pillars of the society. Once again there is a kid whom Susan tries to shelter with all her might. But who would be the end point victim of a story nevertheless? Think about that scene from Irakal for a few seconds where a mother bears her body for a price on the same bed with her crying baby. Violence on the cradle of life. a baby who will grow up from this cradle among the scheming ways of the world and it would be a surprise if he does not turn out to be similar to the inherently violent baby the central character of irakal and isn't that the whole point of the film does it not feel surreal now that you see george named his character baby who would try to shoot his father and his family by the end of the film matoral might be the film where all these themes of george coincide distinctly A housewife of a well-to-do household suddenly leaves a husband and children and starts staying with a motor mechanic. The way this incident happens without any build-up, just like that, one day reminds of the shock treatment that Michael Haneke reserves for his audience. And that is George's point exactly. How Sushila has been battling the cold relationship with her husband every day. How such cold relationships are normalized as archetypes of happy family in our society where the man and the woman simply play roles of the provider and the facilitator. Sushila breaks out of this archetype without much thought and for the sake of it maybe for which she repents but she breaks the castle of glass nevertheless. Like another wife facing domestic abuse much like Vasanthi will break the shackles of marital archetype in the great Indian kitchen 38 years after Adam and Tevariyalu. Like Lekha breaks out from her exploitative family to look for shelter in a man who is not worth it. Like Alice succumbs to the betrayal of both her husband and lover, but in that scene as she faces both these traitors together, she just puts her sunglasses on and walks out indifferently without letting her emotions out. She dies alone, away from them. Death. Perhaps the toughest truth of life. that features in almost all of George's films untimely deaths of craving souls can anything be more unsettling than blood that gets washed away by the ordinariness of life george has always shattered the idea of the male as a savior that has always been celebrated in our films in adam and nevariyalu he doesn't even spare himself as amini runs out of the rescue home along with many other girls toppling the camera and pushing aside george and his crew 
who had been capturing the lives of Alice, Vasanthi and Ammini, all this while perhaps in a kind of mansplaining. Besides Satyajit Ray and Ritik Ghatak, there's hardly any other director as empathetic towards Indian women as K.G. George. Empathy that does not originate from a hollow celebration of the feminine verb or channels of surface level liberty, but a celebration of its conflicts, flaws and eternal desire. That is all from us today. Thank you for watching.